It is good that you salvaged as many Templars as you did, my dear. We will need every Templar, but they will require proper management. We also need to increase our Lyrium supplies considerably. The Chantry may still have stockpiles we can use. Cullen will look into it. He must already have a supply line. He undoubtedly did. But it was established before the Divine Conclave. The situation has changed. The breach has done more than disfigure the sky. The veil itself is broken. All mages, no matter how skilled, are now in danger of drawing demons to them. Before this crisis is over, you may find that Templars, flawed as they may be, are all that stand between us and chaos. You have a low opinion of your fellow mages. It's not so much an opinion as grasping the obvious. Magic is dangerous, just as fire is dangerous. Anyone who forgets this truth gets burned. The Dalish get along just fine without Templars or Circle Towers. As I understand it, the Elves limit their risk by refusing to have more than three mages in a clan. Tell me... What becomes of the Dalish youngster who is not appointed first or second? If a clan can't raise the mage, they're sent to another that's in need of a first or second. And if there are no clans in need of a new apprentice? For those who value survival, sentimentality is not an option. Tell me something. As you will no doubt have a hand in shaping it, what future do you see for mages? Mages shouldn't be kept out of the Chantry. Who knows the dangers of magic better than a mage? A curious idea. Such twists and turns your mind takes. It's something to consider, my dear. Something must be done, immediately. Nothing will be done. Commander Cullen said the same thing. It's an outrage. There are mages here we know are guilty of heinous crimes. You would let that pass? Yes, as will you. This is the Inquisition, and you are not guests here. How are we supposed to... Deal with it. It never ends. Evidently. You don't need to tell me that. I just don't know who told them I'm the one to yell at. Is it that bad? The Templars are too accustomed to having their way. They need to learn. It's your doing, after all. You're the one who conscripted them. I had to think on my feet, and I did what I could. Oh. I do sound like I'm blaming you, don't I? I don't disapprove. In fact, you did well. You made a decision when it needed to be made. And here we are. I wish I could say this was my doing. You're flattering me. I'm not. This always happens. Nobody ever takes my meaning. <laughs> you should see your face. I'm thinking less flattering things now. <laughs> Let's hope the breach has your sense of humor. So, the Templars join the Inquisition. Even with Cullen here, I never thought that would happen. Of course, after Kirkwall, I never thought anyone would use Red Lyrium on purpose, either. The Templars should know better than anyone what that shit does to people. And finding more of it really punches a hole in my Red Lyrium at the Temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. The 
The Inquisition has the numbers to track down all this lyrium and destroy it. I hope so. I don't want to think about what happens if it starts a plague. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? I was planning to put my feet up, maybe grab a nap. You? Whatever I do, it'll be as far from Cassandra as I can get. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who is she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the Dwarves to secure Lyrium for the Inquisition's Templars. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. How? Oh. Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We're becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power instead of comforting the masses. Mage circles started falling years ago. The Chantry was troubled even before the Divine's murder. Yet many people continue to bear its great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? And Rasti's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. Are you sure? Families often fight the hardest. Having grown up among four siblings, I concede your point. I found, however, that the only time two parties cannot negotiate is when they cease to speak. We must learn to think beyond our own wants to secure peace in Thedas. How did someone so lovely and selfless go into Orlesian politics, Lady Montelier? Well, that is, uh, really, you give me too much credit. While you're here, I do have a question. The remaining Grand Cleric sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of you. I'd tell the Chantry that Andraste herself shielded me from harm. I'd truly like to hear the debates that would raise in Val Royale. Thank you for your thoughts. A good day to you.